This is the 2016 AP Physics 1 free response question number 4. So this one is a circuit problem and in this one the first question is how does the potential difference across each resistor um, how, how are they ranked? So the first thing you probably should do to kind of understand this is kind of simplify the circuit. Let's draw a somewhat equivalent circuit. Fix B and C. So this would be D here this would be A here, and then we have our parallel circuit. When you have identical resistors in parallel, um, the resistance of that is essentially going to be one half. So this would be one half of our resistance. Okay, so hopefully then you can see, well, since these are in series with each other, they must get the same potential. And since this one um, has half of the resistance, it must get half of the potential. And then the BC in parallel will be will get the same as each other. So our ranking should be A and D are equal, and B and C are equal, but A and D are greater than B and C. Okay, and then you kind of explain what I just explained. Um, how do we do that with words? Well, you could say something like, um, since A and D are in series, or actually, yeah, yeah, are in series, and therefore they have the same current. Since V equals IR, since they're in series, they have the same current, and they're the same resistance, therefore, same resistance, therefore, uh, V is the same. Okay, uh, B and C are also in parallel. So um, actually, just let's answer why it's greater. So the BC combo, the BC combo is has half the resistance. So should get equals IR, right? If R is one half and the current's the same, they should get half the voltage. Okay, they get one half of the voltage of A and D. Okay, and then lastly, B and C are equal, equal to each other because in parallel circuits, because it's a parallel circuit, right? And in parallel circuits, um, the voltage across them, like when you do your loop law, the voltage across them must be equal to each other. Uh, equal to each parallel, oops, sorry. Equal to each other because they are in parallel. So equal voltage. And again, if this was a real one, I might slow down a little bit. This were the test and um, kind of clean that up. All right, question, uh, the next question is, we're gonna take out B and see what happens. So notice once we take out B, um, we just have a nice simple series circuit. And so in fact, um, the overall resistance should go up. If you notice in this one, our equivalent resistance would be uh, R plus R plus half R. In this one, the equivalent resistance would be R plus R plus R or three R. So notice in the first one, number one, our equivalent would be two plus a half, right? Two and a half R. And number two, our equivalent is three R. So clearly you can see, since the resistance goes up, uh, so B is removed, what happens to A? So since the resistance goes up, since our equivalent increases, the current should decrease. Okay, and therefore, uh, they're just asking for current. So I should therefore decrease in that case. Okay, and again, you could kind of maybe explain what's going on with the equivalent resistance. All right, if we take out B, what happens through C? 
Well, in this case, if we take out B, notice earlier B and C had to split the current, but once we take this out, all of the current is going to be forced through C. So even though the overall current goes down, the current through C should go up. Okay, so our reasoning would be uh, it increases because it no longer, the circuit no longer splits the current with B. In other words, the full current C now gets the full current. Now you could prove this mathematically. I don't believe they're asking you to do this. They're just saying to briefly explain. So this should be sufficient. All right, that's question number four.